If you think motion blur and after effects is just about turning on a switch, you're only scratching the surface. Today, I'm gonna to break it down so clearly that by the end of this video, you will never look at motion blur the same again. Let's jump into After Effects. All right, guys, so as you can see on my After Effects timeline, I have two layers. One of them is just a background solid, and the other one is the circle shape, which I've animated the position to move from left to right. If I scrub through on my timeline, you can see that there's no motion blur going on here, even though this circle is obviously moving. If I wanna enable motion blur on this, I'm just gonna to have to go over to toggle switches and mode and click on that. And now it gives me the option to see the motion blur toggle right here. And I'm just gonna click on that and it automatically enables the motion blur preview on my timeline. So if I scrub through to find the peak of the motion, you can see that there's motion blur going on here. Now this is great for straightforward things like these that are keyframed inside After Effects, but there's just a lot of situations where this wouldn't be enough. And by the way, this button right here is the motion blur preview button for the entire composition. Now, because that is just for previews, if I render this composition out with this button turned off, I'll still have motion blur on my rendered footage because it was enabled on the layer level. And if I press Control M on my keyboard to send this composition to the render queue, and I go over here to best settings under render settings. If you look over here by default, you can see that it is turned on for check layers, which just means the layers that we've checked to have motion blur on. Right now I'm on the small screen workspace just to make the entire interface simple and visible. You could go to the composition settings and under advanced, you can adjust the property of the motion blur for that composition. If you increase the shutter angle, it essentially makes it more blurry. If you increase the samples per frame, it adjusts the quality of the blur, so it makes it more smooth. And if I zoom in over here, we can see the quality of this blur. If I go over to the composition settings again and under advanced, increase the samples per frame, you can see it's made that more smooth, but it will be more processing intensive for your computer. And the shutter phase is just like an offset of the blurs. So right now you can see it's pretty even on both sides. And you can offset that a little bit by changing the shutter phase. If you always wanna maintain the same offset while adjusting the shutter angle, what you could do is make the shutter phase the negative half of the shutter angle. So this is 180, half of 180 is 90. So we make the shutter phase minus 90. Now by default, when you have motion blur on on any layer, it automatically turns on the motion blur preview button on the composition. But if that's not the case for you, you could go up here to edit and then preferences and then previews. And then you wanna make sure that this button right here is checked where it says automatically enable frame blending and motion blur rendering. So as long as this is checked under previews and under composition switches, it will automatically turn on the motion blur preview when there's a layer on your composition that has motion blur enabled. So now that we have motion blur enabled, I'm gonna go ahead and create a new shape layer. So I'm just gonna go ahead and create this new shape. And then I'm gonna go ahead to effects and presets and add an effect called shatter. And I apply this effect, it just shows me the wireframe. So what I'm gonna do is go over here to view and change it over to rendered. So now I can actually see what we're doing. I'm gonna go ahead and hide the circle layer and then scrub through on my timeline to see the effect that we've created. Now this is awesome, but I wanna add motion blur to this. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click on the motion blur switch for this layer and make sure that motion blur is enabled on my composition. And now if I scrub through on my timeline, I'm expecting to see motion blur, but there's no motion blur. That is because not everything in After Effects support the default composition motion blur. There are some effects like the shatter effect that do not support motion blur. So how do I force motion blur to this stubborn animation that doesn't support motion blur? There's an effect for that and it's called CC force motion blur. So I'm just gonna type force and we can see there's an effect called CC force motion blur. Now CC force motion blur is part of the CC effects that come bundled with Adobe After Effects. It's from a company called Sycore Systems and these are partners of Adobe and they help Adobe out with some Sycore FX plugins that come bundled with After Effects. Now, if I go ahead and add the CC force motion blur effect directly to the shape layer or in the effect controls panel, we can see that it figured out that there was motion on this animation and it added that motion blur for us. And just like the composition settings, it also has its own property to make it more blurry or increase the quality of the blur 
or the shutter phase. As you can see from this option right here, by default, it overrides whatever motion blur properties you have in the composition panel for whatever layer that you add the effect to. If you don't want to do that, you can check this off and then it's going to use the values from the composition settings that you've set under the advanced tab. Now what CC Force Motion Blur does is look through the motion that After Effects created and then calculate a motion blur for that motion. So if we go over here to this composition where I have this footage of this 3D render that was not made in After Effects, this is just a video footage. CC Force Motion Blur will be less useful in this situation because all this movement wasn't created by After Effects. This is just a rendered video footage that we brought into After Effects. Now, to be fair, I did speed this up a little bit just so everything happens faster when I'm scrubbing on my timeline. But if I double click on this to see the original footage and I click this little expansion toggle right here at the bottom left of my After Effects, we can see that I have a stretch factor of 30% on this video. So I played around with the speed of the video. I'm going to click it again to turn that off. And what I want to do is apply CC Force Motion Blur to the original clip. So the clip that I haven't stretched out yet. So I'm going to go ahead and right click on the clip, go to Revealed, and then Review Layer Source in Project. And now it takes me to the original footage on my project panel. And now I'm just going to click on it and drag it straight to the new composition button to create a new composition with that raw footage. Now, if I leave that, is going to create a new composition that is the same length as the footage. And now if I click on this little expansion icon right here, we can see that the stretch factor is at 100%. So I haven't done anything to this clip. Now that I have the raw clip on a new timeline without any time stretching going on, if I go ahead and add CC Force Motion Blur, we can see that nothing happens. And if I go ahead and try to increase the shutter angle a little bit, nothing actually happens, right? I can go ahead and increase the blur samples. Nothing really happens. And the reason for that is because there's no vector information going on here. Now, if I had done a little time stretching or speed ramp or just mess with the clip a little bit inside After Effects, CC Force Motion Blur will have a little bit of information to work with. So if I go over here to this composition that has a little bit of stretching, if I go ahead and apply CC Force Motion Blur, we can see that there's a little motion blur going on here. Now, as you might have already noticed, this is just not a good motion blur because CC Force Motion Blur is not ideal for this kind of situation. And the reason for that is because it doesn't look at the pixel information, right? It's not looking at each of these pixels. It's only looking for the vector information inside After Effects that you created by playing around with something, whether it's position or rotation or speed ramping, you did something inside After Effects that caused motion and that makes CC Force Motion Blur have some vector information to deal with. Now, sometimes even if you don't stretch out the clip, it's still possible to get this duplicate frame look when you use CC Force Motion Blur on footage, but you're not going to be able to make it smoother. As you can see right now, it's so harsh. And even if you increase the motion blur samples, it's not really going to make it any better because it is not ideal for a situation like this. And by the way, that vector information that CC Force Motion Blur looks at, it doesn't have to be in the same composition. In fact, I can go out of this composition right now and still apply the CC Force Motion Blur to the master comp. And because After Effects knows that inside this composition, there is some speed ramping going on, the CC Force Motion Blur still works. I could do this directly on the clip. I could also go ahead and create a new adjustment layer and apply the CC Force Motion Blur, and it will still work. As long as that movement was created inside After Effects, CC Force Motion Blur will be able to look at everything and then find that vector information. Now, if CC Force Motion Blur is not ideal for a situation like this because it only looks at vector details that were created inside After Effects, what else can help us force motion blur without thinking about if After Effects created that movement or not? Well, the answer to that is pixel motion blur. So if I go over here and search pixel motion blur, pixel motion blur looks at all the pixel information and creates motion blur out of it. So I can do the same thing I did with CC Force Motion Blur. I can just apply it directly to an adjustment layer and it will create natural looking blur. And now if you go ahead and adjust the samples, you can make it more smooth because it doesn't care if After Effects created that or not. What matters to Pixel Motion Blur is that something is moving on the screen, but it is more heavy on your computer 
especially when you increase the samples to make it more smooth. You can apply pixel motion blur anywhere as well. So directly on a clip or on an adjustment layer or any way you want, basically, it's going to take a look at the pixel information and create motion blur out of it. Now, if we take a look at this car edit composition that I have here, I've applied time remapping on these clips to create this little car effect. And I'm just going to give this a play right now so you can see what it looks like. So as you can see, it speeds up and then it switches to a different clip. Now, technically CC force motion blur will work because we manipulated something inside After Effects. And in this case is the time remapping feature. So we sped it up using time remapping. And if I add the CC force motion blur effect, it will create some motion blur, as you can see right here on the portions that are sped up because it has that vector information to work with. If I select these keyframes and go over to the graph, we can see that the places that are sped up or the places that are like fast, it creates motion blur for those places. Pixel motion blur will give us a better blur at the cost of processing. So if I create a new adjustment layer and then throw the pixel motion blur effect on there, we can see that it's taking a look at the pixels and is giving a natural blur based on what is happening in the clip. Now, pixel motion blur is better, but CC force motion blur still works because we did some manipulation inside After Effects and it has that vector information to work with, which in this case is the time remapping and speed changes that we made. Speaking of speed, if you really want to master video editing in the shortest time possible, you need a shortcut. You need the help of people who have edited hundreds more videos than you. You need real world footage to practice with and you need consistent feedback from experienced editors. VP Plus Academy is that shortcut to get all these things and more. So if you want to master and build a career in video editing in the shortest time possible, VP Plus Academy provides everything you need and hours and hours of training videos and a community of other editors just like you who want to master video editing in the shortest time possible. Go ahead and check the link in the description to find out more. Now, again, the built in motion blur settings inside After Effects can generate motion blur for things like speed ramps and anything that doesn't support the composition motion blur, just like 3D edits in After Effects. So if you're doing 3D edits in After Effects and you want to have the ability to create extrusions, 3D extrusions from text or shape layers, you have to change the renderer in your composition settings from the classic 3D. So right now we're on advanced 3D and the 3D renderer by default will be classic 3D. But when you want to create extrusions like these, you need to be on advanced 3D or cinema 4D. Now, the downside to that is that these 3D renderers do not support motion blur. So if I go over to comp three and I check the composition settings, we can see under the 3D renderer tab that we're on advanced 3D and part of the things that are disabled is motion blur. Same thing with the Cinema 4D renderer. If we check the disabled tab, we can see that motion blur is disabled as well. So it doesn't matter if the motion blur switch is on, you're not going to get motion blur unless you use pixel motion blur, which looks at the pixels and can generate motion blur for pretty much anything. Or you use CC force motion blur, which in this case has vector information, which is this position animation that we did inside After Effects even though it's in a composition that has its renderer to advanced 3D that doesn't support motion blur. So we can go ahead and just add a new adjustment layer and then throw in the CC force motion blur. And when we check the movement, we can see that there's actually motion blur going on here because there is vector information from After Effects. Now, these are all automatic motion blur methods. Now, if you want to go for a more manual approach, there are different motion blurs like directional blur that you can add to your clip and then change the direction and blur to a certain direction. But this is a more manual approach and you'd only want to use this in specific cases. If you want something that is not in a linear fashion, so it's not in a specific direction, you can go for something like a radio blur, which and we have some effects for that, one of which is CC radio blur. So if we add CC radio blur and we increase the amount, you can see we have this little blur in a radio fashion. And lastly, I want to introduce you to this plugin called RSMB, which is real smart motion blur. And if you look at the description right here, it applies motion blur automatically based on tracking every pixel. A lot of editors use this and actually prefer this. So this might be worth considering if you want to do a lot of speed ramping, or edits that require natural motion blur, 
that is generated from tracking every pixel. So that's it, guys. Go ahead and drop a comment if you have any questions, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.